the relation between the breathing motion of the metastable wave packet on the one side, and its pulse decay, on the other side, goes beyond the obvious correspondence between their periods. Indeed, we can follow the trajectory of each and every wave front, and extrapolate it back in time to the instant when the wave front was created somewhere close to the nucleus. What we found, is that these birth times, always correspond to the stage of maximal contraction of the metastable wave packet. This result, corroborates, the collisional point of view, of the autoionization process. When the wave packet is more contracted, the collisions between the two electrons are more probable, therefore, the autoionization rate is increased. Now, let us see how we can detect this motion, and whether we can use it to control the following steps of the ionization. Let us see what happens in the 2S and 2P channels when, after a certain time delay, the IR probe knocks on the atom. From the direct ionization amplitude due to the pump pulse, a complicated interference pattern emerges. As we will see, this is due to the interplay between the direct ionization of the ground state and the above the threshold ionization of the doubly excited states caused by the IR. But first, before examining the origin of the fringes, let us look at the increase in the yield of the 2S and 2P ions due to the IR as functions of the time delay between the two pulses. As expected, both yields are strongly modulated by quantum beats with the same frequency as the metastable wave packet breathing. What was not expected is that these two oscillations were asynchronous. In fact, they are out of phase by as much as 60 degrees. On the one side, this indicates that the 2S and the 2P channels sample different stages of the breathing, and thus provide different information on the correlated electron dynamics. On the other side, this also means that the ionization can be stirred, in a way or another, by acting on the time delay between the two pulses. Now, let us go back to the fully differential observables. What is the origin of those interference fringes? Actually, analogous fringes have already been observed. This was in a real experiment on helium, similar to the one we simulated, but which was focused on the n equals 1, rather than the n equals 2, ionization threshold, and which, therefore, involved bound rather than doubly excited states. The authors of the experiment provided the following explanation for the fringes. First, the pump creates a coherent superposition of both bound and continuum states with certain relative phases. As time passes, continuum and bound states accumulate an additional phase difference given by the product of their energy difference and the time lapse. When the IR probe ionizes the bound states, a second ionization amplitude is created. The two ionization amplitudes, the direct one and the indirect one, incorporate this phase difference. For this reason, their interference gives rise to fringes, with an energy spacing proportional to the inverse of the time delay between the two pulses. Based on this phenomenon, the authors proposed a new interferometric spectroscopy to monitor the dynamics of bound electron wave packets. You will find all the details in their original paper. The fringes that we observe are explained in the same way. In the 2P channel, for example, the direct ionization amplitude has even parity. This amplitude interferes with the odd one photon and the even two photon above threshold ionization amplitudes of the sp3 plus doubly excited state and results, therefore, in fringes which, as you can see, are asymmetric in the one photon region, while they are symmetric in the two photon region. These findings suggest that the interferometric spectroscopy proposed by Mauritsen and others can be used to monitor also the dynamics of autoionizing states. This would be particularly appealing because autoionizing wave packets have a much richer dynamics than bound wave packets. First, the composition of a metastable wave packet changes in time due to the different lifetimes of its components. Second, several ionization channels are available, giving access to different aspects of the dynamics. Third, the electron correlation plays a much larger role for doubly excited states than for singly excited states. Finally, let us look at what happens when the carrier envelope phase of the probe pulse is changed. As you can see, the fringes also change. 
and they change in different ways. They change in ways which are indicative of the multiphoton character of the indirect ionization amplitude. In the one photon region, they have a two pi period, while in the two photon region, they have a pi period. This finding is consistent with a perturbative expansion of the multiphoton ATI amplitude and suggests a possible pneumatrology for the carrier envelope phase itself. Anyway, in the 2P channel the picture is pretty clean. In the intermediate region, of course, the fringes have a mixed behavior. If we look at the 2S channel, however, this mixed behavior is observed at all energies. This suggests that the underlying picture might in fact be more complicated. In summary, we have seen that to meet a stable wave packet, ejects bursts of electron density when compressed. That asynchronous quantum beats give control over ionization branching ratios. That, even for metastable states, direct and indirect ionization amplitudes yield interference fringes in the photoelectron distribution, and, therefore, that a newly introduced interferometric spectroscopy could be used to study the dynamics of autoionizing wave packets. And that how these fringes depend on the carrier envelope phase tells you something about the multiphoton character of the indirect ionization amplitude. This work was developed at the Physics Department of the Stockholm University. Please visit us at www.adam.fisto.se slash Tilde Luca. And thank you for your attention.